Good afternoon viewers, um, this is Africa Renaissance TV and then this is your favorite sports show of course, um, Africa in Sports. Now today we have an interesting game between um, Morocco and Belgium. Right now is the half time here at the Am Amharic restaurant. Um, here with me I have my co-host Mr. Aliumbu and together we have here a guest called Mr. Mohamed. He will help us in the analysis of course and then we are here for the half time analysis. Thank you very much. Good. We are here for the analysis of the game between Morocco and Belgium. Now here I have with me is my co-host Mr. Aliumbu. Mr. Aliumbu, welcome to the show. Thank you very much Mr. Oje Gallo for having me. I am very delighted to be here. Thank you very much. Um, likewise, here also we have with us here is Mr. Mohammed, who will be helping us in the analysis of the game. Mr. Mohammed, welcome to the show. Um, thank you, Mr. Oye, for having me. Uh, Mr. Mbuk, thank you for having me. Like he rightly like mentioned, I am Mohammed Diba. I am a sport enthusiast, and I'm glad to be here on this show today. Thank you very much. We are delighted to have you. Um, starting with you, Mr. Ali Um we have an interesting game, of course, today between Morocco and Belgium. How do you see the game? It's, After very, the fall, sir. it's very, very interesting. The performance of the Belgium is very, very good. But looking at the North Africans, they're also very, very visible. Looking at their, their force and performance, they are very, very visible. They don't give any room to the Belgium to penetrate their back line, which is pretty difficult. Their, their game plan is working. If you look at uh, how the Belgians are pressing, but they're not able to penetrate the goal because actually the, the game plan is what is working. That is to shift the goal post, not to allow goals to end. That is what is going to be difficult for him to be forced I think he's, he's doing very well with, with his performance, with his game plan. And if, that, if this continues, they're going to upset the value. Because they're disciplined and they're willing to, they're not in a rush of, of scoring any goal, but they're waiting for the budget to make any mistakes and they'll be punished. So I think they're, they're very, 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 very good. They are very, very much good in the first half. Now, coming back to Mr. Mohammed, how do you see um, um, the, Moroccan, the Moroccan team compared to the Belgian team? Um, thank you so much. I think um, the Moroccan team, this Moroccan team is a really good team and uh, looking at their attacking players and then defensively they are very disciplined. Um, against Belgium, um, we are looking at the first half, um, we look at the proceedings of the first half. Um, Belgium naturally, um, they have an aging team. Uh, I think this is where Morocco can have um, their strength from. Um, Morocco, I think in the second half, they have to um, go as a, to a more proactive approach and then we have to attack the Belgian team. The defensively uh, minded Belgian team, uh, like uh, when you look at the defensive aspect of the game, they are doing it and they are slow in transition. So their, their strength uh, definitely lies on their attack. So what um, the Moroccan team can do is to also um, try to dominate the uh, proceedings from the middle of the park and then uh, try to look and attack to the Belgian team. I think that way uh, we will be see a great upset for the Moroccan team. Here. Yeah, try to look at attack. We've seen um, um, Ashraf Hakim doing a lot of that. Okay, because we've seen in the, in the, in the um, Belgian Tata, he's doing more of the second balls up front. But what is lacking is, okay, the other half brother, that is um, Masrawa. Okay, he's very, very defensive, he's reserved. So how do we, because we want to see goals. To be honest with you, since this African Cup, um, the World Cup start, kick started, we've seen less goals coming from the African teams. So I don't know what is the problem. Um, to my own point of view, I think um, they're too disciplined and they're giving too much respect to their opponents. And that is not going to give them any good. So this is football. And to me, I want to be um, you attack and score. You don't attack and score. Win goals, win games. Yeah, like goal with them, and you attack and score. You don't attack, you don't score. And looking at they are, they are too much disciplined. They are too much respect for the opponents. This is not giving them any good. And that is not. This is why their goal scoring ratio is very, very low. Looking at the African teams, only Senegal has got three goals in this competition. But looking at Morocco, that they draw their first game. Coming to this game. Up, they not attacked impressively to score. So they must use um, Hakim Zia, who is very good um, on the ball, at least to use him to at least launch some balls in, uh, in, in, into the, uh, into the, into the um, uh, Belgium's hand moves. At least they can, they can do something which is, which is very good left foot. You can offset um, the, 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 uh, the Belgium good goalkeeper that is Chuba Koto. He's very good though, but actually, um, he's a very top class player too. Look at he's also playing in Chelsea and has a very, very good. Um, Good, 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 good games are with out in the competition. So actually, I think they also have a, they also have a team that can upset the Belgian side. They, they, need, they need not be too disciplined in the second half. They need to come out and attack. At least throw the ball out and see what they will happen from the game. Because they, are, they also have three key players. They have very good players that can upset that team that is, that is, um, that is also on them. So I think they need to at least be more uh, active, like Mohamed said, more, more active in the attack. 
launched some balls on the off front of the system, take responsibility in the attack to at this have a goal in the um, coming back to you, Mr. Mohammed, um, comparatively, um, Belgium have a well experienced team compared to that of uh, the, the Morocco team. So, we've seen this in Belgium are already on three points. A draw isn't a bad one for Belgium either, definitely isn't a bad one. But Morocco are on one point, they need to win at least to be at least to have at least four points. I think that would be better. So, how do you see um, more of the Moroccan team? coming up and scoring um, with a well-experienced um, 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 Belgian team. And then looking at Belgium also, they have um, their all-time top scorer, that is Lukaku on the bed. Okay, hopefully um, the coach will introduce him in the second half and um, uh, probably he, he can make upset of the Moroccan team in because he's, he's a world-class driver, of course. Yeah, that, that, that's right. I think um, Belgium has a building and anywhere point, I mean, at every level of the pitch um, to upset this game and then to play a good game and then win against Morocco. But on the other hand, I, I still uh, like to believe that Morocco can, can, can have something from the game. They yeah, are like uh, a said earlier. It's just to have the belief in them that, okay, this is the first half they played well. Uh, they maintained their defensive safe and then their discipline. But now we want to see the, the third aspect of the game, let them attack the game. I mean, they have nothing to lose. Um, by, by not scoring, they have more to lose than um, Belgium here. A pro table is um, Belgium more than um, uh, Morocco, like you can see from the games here. Uh, so what they can do? Um, when you look at the, like I said earlier, the, 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 the defensive aspect of the Belgian team here is uh, that's where their weaknesses are. Even though okay, these are the people that have bulk of experience in the game, but then with time, the, 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 their legs will catch up with them. I mean, uh, as the time goes on, approaching, they say, 80 minutes, 68 minutes, for instance, mm -hmm. their the, the legs will start getting tired, for instance. And uh, this is where Morocco can capitalize in. And then, don't be we should not forget this. This Moroccan team has uh, that ball discipline. They can control the ball. They play. They are playing. It's, not, it's more of a European style of football. They can uh, hold the ball and then play. So, with that, like uh, Hakim, for instance, can take on players. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you have the uh, backland of, of the uh, the Belgian team is exposed. Mm -hmm. So with this, they can, they can capitalize with that. I, and I would like to believe, even with a single goal, if Morocco can have a single goal in the first, uh, second half, they are going to be great. Uh, yeah, if Morocco can have a single goal in the second half, that would be very good. Because um, looking at the Belgian team, especially our tech example from Dilezin Hazard, he's losing a lot of position in midfield. Okay, so the likes of Amrabat should capitalize on those chances and be able to slot in passes, killer passes. Okay, that the striker can be very clinical up front at least to be able to score one goal at least. Because we don't want to see what happened back in the Cameroonian game or in the Senegalese game, playing beautiful football up to the last nine minutes and then you are scored two, you are punished. So we don't want to see that. Morocco, of course, have a very good force up, and then we are hoping and praying that when they come to the second half, they will be more clinical. I hope this will be the half of them top of their foot, so that they can at least try to grab a goal um, from the starting of the second half. I think that should be very important. So this was your first half. Yeah, yes, they also scored a goal. Thank you very much, Mr. Mbou. They scored a goal which was ruled out, of course. Okay, they are some offside, of course. But it was it, it, it can boost spirit of a team. Okay, scoring goals in the both whether it is offside or not. But we are hoping that when they come second half, they will be more clinical up front and score goals. This was your first time of our analysis, and then we hope we will have goals in the second half. Thank you very much. And then, um, thank you viewers. This is Africa Lions and TV. That brings us to the end of the first half analysis here at Amharit restaurant, right at Pipeline, okay, adjacent to the Pipeline Mosque. Here is a very rich African restaurant, of course. You can come make your orders. We have different varieties of food, very rich food, of course. Here at Pipeline, Amharit Restaurant. Thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you very much, viewers. Welcome back. This is Africa in France TV, your favorite sports, um, sports show, Africa in Sports. It has all ended here at Am Amharit Restaurant in Pipeline. The game ended 2 0 in favor of Morocco. And then Morocco right now are sitting on top of the table. It is an interesting table, of course, because later in the day we are looking at an interesting encounter between the other half. Belgium line lost the game, but still they have an opportunity because they are still on three points behind um, Morocco. So, Mr. Mu, welcome back. Thank you very much for having us back. It's an exciting moment for African teams having 
Morocco did not have the guys winning their second game. It's very, very exciting. It's, it's very, very fun. I'm very like, I'm liking it. Seriously. Like it. I'm liking it. Mr. Yeah. 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 Um, I think, like you said, this is an exciting moment for not just Morocco, but uh, for African football. Um, personally, I think I saw this coming. Uh, I think. If you look at the Belgian team, uh, like I said earlier on, um, that is uh, the host of weekly. Uh, their backline is uh, definitely their weekly. Week and then Morocco is a team that um, solely depends on their attack. Their attack is a very good attack. Like, I think Ziad is uh, one person that I love the most. His uh, left foot is, is, is awesome. He can play. Good. Um, so uh, that is one of the things that they did. When you look at um, the first half, like we said earlier on, um, they kind of, they, their height, uh, this Moroccan team has height advantage. So I think that is one of the things that they have going uh, uh, for seeing that they were looking at set pieces to, to, to score goals and then take a penalty work out for the future. I'm really glad to, to have you it. It worked out for them, okay? Because I'm um, looking at the second half, the, um, the Moroccan coach introduced fresh legs. I think that worked for him. Mm -hmm. Right, Mr. Wood, that worked for him. It did, very, it did work very well because looking at uh, what he done, he brought in a lot of fresh legs. That was surprised him removing. Achieving, but what he paid dividend because actually bringing the first legs and the young players coming in, they really bought the model of the attack. It paid dividend, they've scored. And they've scored, and that's what they're looking They have scored, especially Sabiri, who came in the first half, he came in the 65th minute and ended up scoring in the 73rd minute. That was very good, um, tactically it was good, and then we've seen that. How do you see that free kick goal? That free kick was super. It was, it was super. Looking at, looking at the angle at which it at scores, it, yes, is, it, is, it is amazing. I'm, I'm loving it, it's, it's coming from an African. And it's just lovely. This is, I've never, I've never seen like figure who scored at that point in this World Cup. Uh, it's not yet that that you it's, 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 it's just beautiful, it's beautiful and it's just, I'm loving it. I'm loving it seriously. Yeah, yeah. And then the second goal also was a fantastic goal because we've seen a beautiful support from Hadi Zier. We know what Zier can do. We've been watching him in club level. He's been very great in Chelsea. He had a very bad season there. But, okay, and the World Cup also, he was not with the national team, of course. Um, then because he had some mis um, uh, miscommunication with the former coach. But now they have a new coach and then they introduce Hakim Ziyech. Seeing him having that impact on the on the Moroccan team, how do you see Ziyech and the, and the motivation he have added towards the Moroccan team? Yeah, I think um, Ziyech is, uh, like I said, he's a very good professional and then um, the, the, those things are common uh, among footballers and then coaches. Um, but when you look at um, this game particularly, um, Ziyech was uh, the outstanding player in the game. Um, his ball depends on his goal. And then he was able to help the Moroccan team um, retain possession high of the field, which was uh, their advantage. Because that is uh, how they were able to, uh, even before some they scored a goal, it was um, disallowed by the uh, yeah, but it was, uh, and that goal came from, um, that disallowed goal came from the uh, set, the set piece and the end, of course, so uh, right in front uh, of the goal post over there. So that is important. They had the same thing in Savannah, the first goal, that is how it came to. Uh, when they had a set piece, I mean, I think now teams now are concentrating more on set pieces. It's like um, we have uh, technical people that are really able to hurt you with the uh, good set pieces when they happen. So that is one thing they did. And Zia has 100% contributed with that. Not just the pretty uh, the set piece, even the goal, he assisted his own goal brilliantly. Yeah, he has a fine game, okay, and then he has taken responsibility, of course, because he's a big name in the Moroccan team. A big name, but we've seen Morocco are very good when it comes to set pieces because they scored two set pieces, Mr. Moore. They scored two set pieces, the first was rolled out, and then the second one counted. Yeah, every every team has their, their, their strength, that's that is their strength, and they use it. And they, they, they are very good in, in, in delivering the ball in, the, in that in that um, I was very, very much disappointed looking at um, Chino Kodo and his and his and his, and his experience, and he was beaten in, in his near post. That was that was very very weak from the uh, from the Belgian goalkeeper. I don't know what is wrong with him. But actually, um, he was beating in his near post, and that was very very. Um, the the figure was classic. It was very planned, and it was it worked out for for the for the, for the executor and that that give a, that that goal was just a plan. And I love the game and I love everything that came up in the second half, coming to attack. And, and they were very disciplined in the in the second half, in the first half. But when they came in the second half, at least. They, they said, look, let's, let's go over and see what we can have. And they threw it up and they, and they, and they did it actually. Because looking at what Mohamed said in the first half, they were giving too much respect to the, to the, um, to the um, um, Belgian team. But when they, when they get into the part that pressure, I think they could say, look, hey, let's go over there and, and have it. And they did it and they did it. So I think that was very, very good for them. That was very good. That was very good. Like I said, of course, uh, goals win games. You can only win games by scoring goals. Okay, but now coming back to you, Mr. Mamet, overall, how do you see Morocco? Okay, in this group qualifying, will they be qualified in this group? And where are we looking at Morocco? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, now Morocco stands uh, a better chance, but the most uh, chance of qualifying from the group. Uh, as it stands, um, the uh, Morocco can do as a uh, group leaders or on a uh, at the most. But I think uh, the, the, the team, with, the, with what they have shown today, they have the ability to go through this team. Uh, the next game is all they will need. Uh, they can have maximum points uh, by going with three points and end up with give them a direct qualification or even a point can, can be enough for them to qualify given the results of the, uh, the other games. Uh, so I think one of the things that uh, we should also pay credit uh, to, I think, is the coach. Uh, to me, I think from the first half, mostly it's for players. And the second half has to be a technical decision from the coach. I think, um, like we said earlier on um, in the first half analysis, the team has to be played. They have to uh, keep the ball and then attack the game team, which they did. And uh, talking about the decision of him taking off Hakimi, I think um, that was a good one. Um, Hakimi has uh, that attacking prowess, but then he was uh, mostly uh, playing a defensive side of the game. When you look into the second half, and, uh, you, you uh, realize that okay, um, the team up their game, they attack more with intent. Uh, uh, Zai was able to keep the ball up front, and then this was something that paid dividend for them. So to me, the, what the coach did was, was good, and then he was able to bring in fresh legs, not just fresh legs, uh, legs but then the young people that are athletic that can run at the uh, these defenders. And uh, the other aspect of uh, this game that really impressed me was uh, their, the, uh, their ability to, to be disciplined and then to shut down key players, such as um, Hazard, Kevin Hazard, um, Kevin De Bruyne. Um, when you look at Hazard's overall game, especially in the first half, he was dispossessed. He was the most player that was dispossessed most in the game. Um, De Bruyne, we all know De Bruyne, that, uh, he can shoot at any range, he can uh, assist at any, any range of the field. The, how the Moroccan team, especially the midfield uh, footballers, how they were able to um, lock him up entirely in the game. He, he, he wouldn't have uh, two to three chances in the game. Anytime he has a ball, there is about two men on him. So that worked well for me. So I think with that discipline, Morocco will go by in this tournament. Definitely, Morocco will go by in, the, in this tournament. And then we're hoping and praying they have a successful campaign. Because to be honest, with what I've seen today with the Moroccan team, okay, I've, I've seen them going far, to be honest. Because they played beautiful football, of course, and then they take charge of the game. Okay, during the second half, like I said, the first half, they were disciplined, like you said, okay, defense wise. But what was lacking was being clinical up front. That was lacking in the first half, and then, um, like you said, one leader, the Moroccan coach, have come up with tactics where then, okay, they were able to punish um, uh, the Belgian team. And then we are hoping that Morocco will continue with the same trend, okay, because um, um, winning, if you want to progress far in the World Cup, you need to be consistent. Consistent in what? In winning games. You need to win games to be consistent. At least we are hoping that playing Morocco goes fast in this competition. And this was your first um, second half analysis here, right here with me, Mr. Mook and Mr. Mohamed. Thank you very much for having you. We are very delighted to have you here with us uh, with the analysis. Thank you very much, Mr. Mook. Coming back to you, the final words. I'm, I'm very impressed. I've seen Morocco going very far. I think our team, some African teams, should learn from Morocco. Morocco's discipline and they managed to fight. But this is a combination that no one can win. Without winning, we want to win the games and play the game in the competition. So actually, Morocco has set the, set the ball rolling. I think all of the nations who also take away from Morocco have to see um, the game. They have to see it to win because winning is not to take them to the next level. So I think our family is going far as far as we can because I have Senegal up there who is going to win. Morocco have given us a finish here across the game, but actually, we have few African countries that can make the same in the second round, and I expect we can go. Yeah, with what I'm seeing, okay, it's very interesting for the Senegal, uh, for the African team because Senegal lost their first game and then won their second game. Morocco drew their first game and then won their second game. So we are looking up to Cameroon, okay, who's playing, and then we are hoping they lost their first game, of course, but they played beautiful football. But like I said, goals win games. Yeah, not the kind of beautiful football that you play, you need to score goal. So we are hoping that tomorrow also. Cameroon will take charge and then uh, take responsibility so that at least they can start a better chance of qualifying to the next stage. Thank you very much. This was your show, favorite school, Africa in Sports. And uh, Mr. Mohamed, many final words regarding the whole uh, campaign as a World Cup. Yes, uh, I think this uh, World Cup. Um that the people um, have seen uh, a lot of reactions from social media from different countries um, about African teams that are represented at the World Cup here. Um, people do forget easily. I think uh, when you look at Spain, the year they were winning the World Cup, they lost their first game. So, and this, this happens, so it has become a norm. So we, I don't think we should uh, be eager to write them off. Um, losing a game um, shouldn't mean uh, we are disqualified or we are disqualified from competing for the next round. So I think uh, I am hopeful that some African teams uh, will 
really protest the next day again will take us back. Thank you very much for having you. And I hope the African team will support you to the next day and then they will make us really proud. Thank you very much. It was amazing to have you here with us. Mr. Mohammed and likewise my co host here, Mr. Ali Ugo. We are happy to have you here with us. This is all that we have for you here. Um, yes, thank you very much. This is the all that we have for you in this edition of Africa in Sports and Africa Renaissance TV. And then we are right here at the pipeline. Um, at Amharin restaurant. Here at Amharin you can have all your orders. We have catering, you can make your orders. We have an online app where you can order. We have very rich African foods of course here at Amharin restaurant. And then we're hoping that we will have more sponsors here coming on your way and then we will gladly do the advertisement for you. Thank you very much.